good. Can you give me a clap? Yes. Perfect. All right, maybe let's start with just maybe if you could briefly introduce what brings you to Prague and, and uh, why you're a specialist on the subject. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Um, yes, I thank you. I was invited to Prague uh, in order to talk about uh, the, the movement in Berlin, which is based on, well, the, it's what I called self-made city because it's, um, it's not only the Baugruppe format, um, but also many projects uh, from small initiatives that change public space um, all the way up until into to huge developments of new quarters of the city, new areas of the city that are all self-initiated. And um, I've been studying the, the, the Baugruppe format uh, for quite a while. I did an exhibition about it uh, when I was directing the German Center for Architecture in Berlin, the DATS, um, in 2008 when the projects were just starting, when a lot of these were happening all at the same time, and everybody in the city was excited because there was something finally going on. It was when nothing else was happening. And now, this is, it's much more about how the city is transforming, how we create together the spaces where we live and how we can make the city better. I, was, I looked at your book, and what I, what I found interesting was that you termed, you called Berlin a place of urban pioneers, something that, how, how what do you mean by that? How, how are Berlin citizens urban pioneers in what way? Well, leftover spaces can be, they don't have to just be closed off, and that's always what was, as a, since I've been in Berlin, Berlin was always about the spaces that were not yet the spaces that offered opportunity. That's what makes Berlin so interesting because it's not beautiful. It's a city that's interesting. It's a, it offers opportunity. Everywhere you look, there's something not quite finished and not quite right. And it's that, that people just start to say, look, this, is a, this could be a wonderful place. And they just do something there, be it a bar along the river or um, turning an old space into a garden, as a, an unused evacuated building site into a garden, or, yeah, I mean, there are a million projects like this, and I mean, they're just so, it's not even only what has happened, but it's also what's envisioned. For example, in self-initiative, there are architects who've said, let's turn this arm of the canal, the river, into a swimming pool and they've done feasibility studies and now, and they've won awards for it and now it's actually being backed by the city. So will it actually get built? It or is, that is in the plan? process, it's in the process. And this is all about how can we try, I mean, just take over the city and transform it. What, how, how can this happen? And the city is ours. Who makes the city actually? Is it just the investors? A few of them who come in and determine what's built, where, and what uses even. Um, isn't it more about, we know, we live there, we know what we want, and it's about finding the ways to make that happen. So is it just the empty spaces in, in Berlin that make it, makes it so specific, or is it more about the attitude of the people maybe, or uh, the government, or well, the Senate, or who's I, the, I think who's the it all, of course, of course, it all fits together. I think uh, Berlin has a huge creative pool of creative, uh, young creatives living there, um, looking for things to do, <laughs> just by nature, um, and not just accepting or you know, always seeing the opportunity in somewhere where maybe someone else may not, along with a whole lot of opportunity in the city in terms of space, um, as well as a city administration that's open to that kind of, um, maybe can't facilitate, but facilitates by not hindering. Yeah, exactly. But not, so now today we're here at the Baugruppe Super Exhibition, and Baugruppe is a big part of what we're talking about. So, do you think you could maybe explain a little bit how what, how does a typical is there a typical Baugruppe development, or what makes it what makes it so special from the ready-made development projects? Yeah, I think at the when things started mm. with the Baugruppe, it was a bit pragmatic. It was about trying to find a a way to create a living space in the city to suit 
people's needs. Many young families who didn't want to move out of the city started to come together and, and buy sites. And at the, at the time in Berlin, sites were very cheap and nothing was happening. The market was really dead entirely. So um, that transformed very quickly when people started to see, well, when we come together, we can start to share these different amenities, we can share spaces, we can make a real community, we can make a real kind of different life in the city just by, you know, being neighbors and, and deciding how we want to live together. So discussions really mushroomed into how do we want to live together, what can we share, what can, can we even actually, at first, the, the uh, group, but they, they started to make really big apartments and then the discussion was like, well, wait a minute, if we're going to share these spaces, we can actually reduce the costs and reduce the size of our apartments because we, the party space is somewhere else. So these are the kind of discussions, and, and I would say that there's no kind of typical situation because so many groups have come together to realize very specific goals, um, goals that they wouldn't otherwise be able to realize by just buying an apartment. So I think it's much more than the pragmatic um, ownership-based goal, like buying an apartment. It's much more about finding a way to create their way of life in the city. Okay, so, so the idea is for the group to get together and sort of bypass a developer, if I understand it correctly, to talk directly to the architect. And uh, so what, why is that better? Does it make it more customized or, or what is, the, what is the main added value to that? Well, the added value is the customization point. Exactly. That, that's right. When you, when you are able to work directly with the architect, it's not only about... Well, first of all, you save money. Yeah. Okay, so that's, that's obvious. But How much money do you save compared to real estate? Like well, build? that has been pinpointed at at least 20%. Hmm. Some people have said more. That just depends, of course, on the market. But... 20% is kind of the safe savings. Um, and what the groups have been able to do more than, of course, they get to plan their own four walls. They get to say exactly how they want what. But often you can do that with a developer as well. So it's really about the, the big picture. It's about how do we want to live together as a group? What can we share? And what goes on between... Uh, even about the mix of functions. So some people want to do, it, it, particularly in bigger projects, in the middle of the city, you need to figure out what happens in the ground floor. So, and that's often an easy solution just to put in the parking garage. Uh, yeah, it, but it, that's not how we make good cities. And a lot of these groups actually decide and, and have the goal to do something more than, for example, the, in the bar um, project, in the Oderbergerstrasse, it's a wonderful situation where they give back to the city, but with their art space, they have a wonderful cafe. So um, it's really about deciding, ha being able to hold that in their hands, how we live together, what spaces, how do they change over time, all kinds of issues that are simply not addressed. The is, there, is there a type of people that choose this sort of lifestyle, or has, has it been more diverse, or are the, are the people in the, in the buildings usually the same age or same income level, or is, is it, can one generalize like um, that, or is it...? It's, I would say there's been a transition. It started out that many of these small self-initiated projects were a tight group of people that were fairly similar, um, but that has changed. Um, a lot of groups now have the goal of being um, diverse, not only in income levels and types of people, but also in age groups, because the issue of generation change is one that's important, that if you all start out at the same age, of course, it, it, something's going to happen. We don't know what in 20 years. So um, that, has, that has really kind of transformed and been more diverse. But I think the, the really important part is that many of these groups have special goals and special interests that they can realize. Like what? What, realize. what, are, what are some of the examples? Well, there's, a, um, for example, a, a group uh, that's a hosp uh, several groups that are hospices. That means that it's a group of gay men who have two floors taking care of other sick gay men. 
So it's a really special interest group. Another building that is um, totally normal living situation, but in the ground three floors, they have a, um, a hospice as well, um, a meeting point for people who are terminally ill, and two floors that they rent out as kind of community apartments, and they help to take care of them. And so I think that's really interesting that they've come together to realize those kind of very special, special situations. Another um, group that's... Um, all of the children in the family have some kind of a special needs, um, and so they really help each other. And uh, if we move now to the role of the city, why should the city support this kind of fresh type of development? Something is, is, is it the, the city's role to support this kind of uh, development, or how can they actually? As well, well? <laughs> yeah, that's that's also let, let's. Let's talk about just simply like what do they need to do in order to support. Um, it doesn't actually have to be that much. Um, it can be, we can call it just facilitation by way of um, enabling these groups uh, to be able to buy the land. The most important, the most, um, what usually doesn't work is that the, the groups are not fast enough in order to be able to buy the land. In a market that's, that's, that's heated in any way, the developer, the normal developer, is quicker in buying a site. But that doesn't mean that these kind of groups don't have enough money to buy them. It doesn't actually mean that the, the city needs to support them financially, but just needs to secure sites. And why should they do that? Um, because these groups are full of people who are actually actually bringing something for the city, bringing something back to the city. They're going to live there they're, um, and for the long term. In, in Berlin, nearly none of the groups have, have changed. There's been in, nearly no fluctuation in all of the ones that I've looked at. And what happens is that, it, that, that really they have a vested interest in what's happening there. And when we talk about mixed use as well, that many of the... Um, the kind of functions and um, stores and businesses that are that are happening there, it's, they're based on real need and they grow and mushroom. That means they're actually helping the economy. They're doing things for the neighborhood. We have people living there who uh, interact with the other people around. So there's a social value added as well. It's not just price, but, uh, but also that they stay there for a longer time. Roots in, 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 their, in, their, in their environment and create real kind of neighborhood structures. Hmm. Is it cheaper for like do, does the does the city sell it cheaper to these people than for the market price, or does it is it enough as you said to sort of give them time to form this belt? Of the... It's enough to even set a fairly high price to the site and secure it for one year, and to say um, the group who can come up with a concept that is, um, that, yeah, that, that, that actually gives something back to the city, for example. They can put certain stipulations on it, but even that is a great help to these, to the groups. Maybe uh, if we look at Prague, uh, there's, this, this, in the 90s, the city sold off quite a lot of empty lots, and so now we don't have that many. Is it possible to have Baukruppen in buildings that are already built? Have, have you had like just reconstructions, or have you had any experience with that as well? Uh, th there are many of those examples. Um, that's actually interesting, because when you have a very special building, it takes special people who really, have, who really love it and find a way to breathe new life into it. And so that's actually a great solution for old buildings, to find the people first and let them decide what's going to happen there because they'll find a way to do it. There's, there's a very, quite a large group in Berlin that redid a hospital. It was a, an old turn-of-the-century hospital building with, it was a campus, really, an entire campus. Um, and they've done a beautiful job of with a huge amount of mixed functions and turning it into living spaces and, and mixed function, with mi mixed functions. 
And so now maybe do you see Baukopen or this sort of or self-made city as becoming more of a mainstream phenomenon or do you think it will stay more of a niche kind of uh, border type? <laughs> it, What's the market share? Yeah, I, I think that the potential within society mm -hmm. is there that it becomes a really a main way of making city, <laughs> really making our own city. But in order for that to happen, it needs to be taken really quite seriously as a developmental method. Um, I think the potential is definitely there. It is, all of these projects are serious. They've provided really serious benefits to the, to the city. But um, that entirely depends on the site, like really, if, whether or not they'll be able to get the land. And it doesn't actually, if this is talked about enough, it doesn't actually have to be the city, but private landowners can be convinced to choose. So, I mean, they don't even have to take a, um, um, like what do you say? Um, they don't even have to get less money for the site, but simply decide which, I mean, really have a look at who they're selling their sites to. Perfect. Well, thank you very much for answering these questions. Good. Yes.